again with box B <coughs> yeah nothing on the side oh there's some uh, oh there's some notes there's some notes saying right nothing here doesn't say what this any of this is but this is four not a great deal of four some Punisher oh, I'm making sure you can see that four Punisher and Daredevil a few Daredevil there let's see what I've got then all right <coughs> something called Silver Age, here it is, all the way, all new tale from the Silver Age. Not a dream, not a hoax, not an imaginary tale. Super Luffer, Bat Penguin and Green Sinistro. Witness a world turned topsy-turvy in this oversized stunner. Okay. And here it is again, here it is, the all new tale from the Silver Age, Justice League America. Great Scott, the world's at the mercy of Earth's mightiest super criminals, the Justice League. We've got another Silver Age bit of madness, Challengers of the Unknown. Holy Hannah, has Kronos finally robbed the Death Cheaters of their borrowed time? And here's a Teen Titans. I'm guessing these are not really old tales from the Silver Age. They're just, they're just reimagined, recreated um, tales kind of thing. I'm, I'm sure that's what it is. They've, they've just basically done a little series of like... Silver Age inspired new stories inspired by the old Silver Age. I'm pretty sure these are not actually from the Silver Age reprinted. I think they're just, you know, that style. Uh, yeah, jolly good they are too. Hurry, Robbie, dial faster, you're finished. Mayhem at a missile base as the Manhunter from Mars goes berserk. <laughs> cool. I always liked Heroes for Hire, but I never, sorry, Heroes for yeah, um, Dial H for Hero, sorry. I always liked Dial H for Hero, but I never actually had any, any of the Robbie Reed uh, ones. I had the, uh, the, the, the couple, um, what was their names? Vicky Gale and um, Chris, somebody or other. Anyway, Doom Patrol, Batman and the Metal Men. Green Lantern, fight Green Lantern, fight! Uh, the Seven Soldiers of Victory. And finally a Silver Age 80 page giant. Eight new superheroes. Who are they? What are they? One side Superman. Back off Batman. You can't save the Earth, but we can. <laughs> How will they succeed when a JLA failed? That looks like a good little run there. Oh, a good little run here as well. We've got Starman from 1988. I think I may have the full run of this. Uh, all in pretty good condition. I can't remember what this Starman's name was. There's been so many Starman in uh, DC Comics. Was this the one? No, this isn't the one who ended up being gay, is it? I can't remember now. There was the alien Starman, wasn't there? Who's still kind of around. <clears throat> There's Starman, who's the son of the Golden Age Starman, who had his run. I think I showed off his books in my last um, uh, video. Um, I can't remember if this Starman's a human or not. It's all a bit confusing trying to remember blinking DC or any comics for that matter. So many. There's just too many to remember. Enter Lady Quark. That looks like a bit of a, a clinch going on there. A romantic clinch. All right, Starman, guest starring Batman. And he looks like he's fighting Blockbuster there. Starman busts loose. Been a while since I read these. Rampage is back, but who is the real threat? I think Rampage is a Bat, uh, Batwoman, uh, a Wonder Woman villain, I believe. Suddenly, Superman. Yeah, quite a long run here. It sort of disappeared just kind of pretty quickly in the end. That deadline's been around for a lot longer than I realised. He does pop up every now and again. I always forget what his name is. 
Um, yeah, Deadline. But he's been around for a fair old while now. That was 89. I wonder if that's when he first came about in 89. He's not a well-known villain particularly, but he does get about. Dr. Bolaris. Hmm. Don't know who that guy is. But it looks like he's about to get defeated. Hero no more. Starman. He's got a bit of a mallet there, isn't he? He's got a bit of a mallet. He's got a bit of a Superman of the 90s hairstyle. That's two years worth there. Number 24. I reckon it goes I reckon this goes for about four years. I'll get this all looking about 50. Looking about 50 comics here. Oh here's Golden Age Starman, isn't it? It looks like he's a bit is it Ted Knight? Or maybe it's his, one of his sons, actually. It could be one of his sons. Is that the mist, maybe? Stop! You're killing Superman! Crisis of the Crimson Kryptonite. That's <laughs> an interesting villain. Looks like Bubblegum Man. The Seduction of Starman, part one. Part two, he's fighting a giant wasp. Or Hornet. Part three. Four. Is that it? Four parts of that seduction of Starman. And he's facing off with. Uh, is that Monel of the uh, Legion of Superheroes? He looks a bit like Monel, doesn't it? There we go, is that Rampage again? And uh we'll for, always forget her name, Phantom Lady, isn't it? Phantom Lady, that costume. That costume is ridiculous. I can't believe she's a Golden Age character. There's there's nothing to that costume. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, let's move on. <laughs> Look even from the side view. That is a ridiculous outfit to be fighting crime in any era. Golden Age, Silver Age, Bronze Age, Modern Age. I don't know, nudist age, that should be in, practically. Mind you, he's no better. <laughs> Hercules is flaunting it as well. <laughs> cool, blimey. Plasmax, that must be the guy that I thought was Bubblegum Man. Plasmax is back and Starman is all choked up about it. And here he meets, not the real thing, but a deadly simulation. Don't tell me they turned Elvis into a supervillain. <laughs> That's terrible. The King of Crime. Oh, thank you very much. Eclipso casts a shadow of doom over Starman. It's Starman versus Lobo versus Eclipso. That Lobo gets everywhere, doesn't he? There you go, Lobo rules. And the very last one, very last part of this Star Shadows four-part story. Uh, Eclipso, guest star and Power Girl. This is 92. Look at her costume in 92. No boob window. No low cutness. I don't know. It's sensible, but it's just not it's just not power again, is it? Okay. Our man from the pages of JLA. This is right, this is a relative of the first golden age our man, isn't it? What's his name? Rex Tyler? I think it's Rex Tyler. I nearly said Rex Mason, but that's Metamorpho, isn't it? Uh, I think he's Rex Tyler, and um, there was a son, he has a son, doesn't he? I think he was Our Man at one point, and then this Our Man, I think he's from the future. It's a time-travelling Our Man. I think he still has the benefit of the Miraclo uh, peel or whatever it is, or, or he's able, something to do, he's got something to do with an hour, maybe he can freeze time for an hour or something like that. I can't remember what it is. It was not a bad run, this stuff. I think it was quite, quite interesting. This is from 99, so it's been a fair old while since I've read it. Tell me, Amazo, what is it like to be human? The horror! The horror! <laughs> Day of Judgment, The Last Temptation of Snapper Car. Family Feud. Bride of the 
Gombeezy? Bride of the Gombeezy? Okay. Bride of the Gombeezy. Oh, we've got our man. One million. One of three. So this is not just the, the one million kind of uh, annuals that they did that time, or the one-off event. This was turned into a three-parter. So this, this is basically imagined that uh, this is the one millionth issue of, uh, of our man. That's how they did it in the, uh, the main thing anyway. Uh, but yeah, the, the issue numbers are just normal, but yeah. There was a, like an annual event, I think it was, where everyone went forward for to a million years. But there was this guy as a, a time traveller anyway. I'm assuming that's the period that he's meant to have been from originally. But I think he's like a, um, a product of Tyler Industries. So he's, he's kind of like a carrying on the tradition of the Owl Man because he's like something that they created. So he belongs, yeah, that kind of thing. He's not actually in the family, but he kind of is in the family because they made him. I think we've got about two years worth of this run. A Silver Age Shocker, the sinister secret of Snapper Car, Super Traitor. Never really f uh, read in many comics with that Snapper Car in, to be honest. I've heard of him uh, since, but I don't think I ever read any sort of Silver Age where it spoke about him, so I'm not that familiar with him. Just like um, a Justice League kind of, kind of like a Justice League's version of um, uh, Rick, uh, what's his name, from Captain America and Captain Marvel and Hulk and Rick Jones, is it? Rick Jones. I've stolen your powers, your friends and your name. Did I miss anything? No, <laughs> not a thing. Harsh. Okay, this is the last batch. I think it takes us up to a nice round two years. It's psychotherapy for our man. Tell me about your motherboard. <laughs> uh, number 22, Tom Payer looks like the writer of this run. I'm not sure if he's moved on to other books, what other books he's done, but I feel, I'm pretty sure I remember this being an enjoyable read. There you go, from the pages of Our Man. Our Man meets his maker. So that must that could be the Golden Age Ma Our Man. And then you've got this one. I think they were mainly friendly anyway. I think in the end, the, the android Our Man, I think gives up his life to, to rescue... The son of uh, Rex Tyler. I can't remember what his name is. Now. I think that could be what happened. I can't remember now though. Okay, I do not remember this. <laughs> Jonathan Lord starring in Silver Blade. These are from 1987. These are. No idea what it's about. I guess it's some kind of Hollywood story going on here. He's some kind of stunt man or something. In the uh, Errol Flynn kind of tradition of movies. Uh, and just the way the silver blade is written inside, like a film, looks like a you know a roll of film. Silver blade defending the silver screen, and they can't believe it's not a movie. Hmm. Gene Colan. Powers beyond powers, realms beyond realms, life and death, fantasy and reality become one. If they be giants. Silver Blade, the motion picture. It's definitely all based in like Hollywood and uh, yeah, he's even, got, he's even got his own star there. Jonathan Lord's got a star on the Walk of Fame just next to Gary Cooper's. That makes him a big star, I think. But he doesn't look like he's in a very good state there. Okay. Is that a black and white and then the colour remake? I don't know. And that's it. The last reel. A 12-parter that I have no knowledge of whatsoever. <laughs> okay, it's a nice chunky book. Christmas with the Superheroes. From 1988, <laughs> the nice little superhero theme there. Uh, you wonder, girl sitting in the bottom of the tree, wondering what presents are hers. Robin wants to open a present early. Batman's having a listen. He's having a listen to his <laughs> Superman's present. His lead line to stop him from, uh, yeah, from from peeking. Uh, is it wildfire sticking baubles on top of the tree? And uh, I wonder what uh, Black Canary's bought for Green Arrow there. It's, um, I don't know what it could be. It's kind of, 
Yeah, it's a bow, isn't it? It's got to be. <laughs> and on the back, number two, uh, all new Christmas with the superheroes. Uh, another whole scene going on there. Looks like they're having a party with the elves in um, in um, the North Pole. <laughs> but it's from the same year. So this was 89. This one, 88? Or... Yeah, 88, 89. So they did two years in a row. And it's quite a thick book. Look how big that is. It's quite a thick book, that. I might have a look at that later on and see if it's worth doing a video about for, for actually for Christmas. Because this video is not going out until February. So if you see a video of me talking about this, you know that I did it. Okay, from the pages of Batman, Anarchy. Anarchy got his own run. Not only did he get his own run, he even got a blinking green London ring. I didn't know that. He even got a power ring. I don't think it lasted, though. Because uh, here he is fighting Kyle Rayner. Oh, well, that's a shame. Maybe his, uh, his ideas of how to utilise the ring were a little bit out there. Sadly, it didn't last too long. Less than a year. Number five. Number six is facing off with Ras Al Ghul. Never a good thing. Number seven, got Day of Judgment. He's atop the Haunted Tank. That's a blinking team up you never thought you'd see. The Haunted Tank and Anarchy from Batman. <laughs> That's crazy. And in the final issue, your name is Anarchy. One of these guys is your father. Have a nice life. Hmm. Is he the Joker's son? Killer Croc's son? Two Faces' son? Or the Ventriloquist's son? <laughs> okay, a bit of vertigo here. Sandman presents the Corinthian, everyone's favourite nightmare. It's a three-parter from 2001, suggested for mature readers. The Corinthian, is that not the embodiment of a serial killer? Or well, he is a serial killer. The, I don't know, from nightmares or something like that, I'm not too sure. Anyway, that was a three-parter of the Corinthian. Okay, another Sandman's presents miniseries. The Dead Boy Detectives. A four-parter. Ed Brubaker was the writer on this one. This is from 2001 again. Some funky covers there. Half nightmarish, half surreal. Yeah. Creepy and strange. A anyway, four-parter. Again, for mature readers. Okay, you've got a couple of uh, DC Focus. Does anyone remember DC Focus from 2004? Touch, this one is called Touch. Looks like, I don't know if it's a four-parter. I seem to only have, I don't know, how many parts have I got? Is it six-parter? Let me just see. I thought I'd seen four, but maybe I've put them in wrong. Oh yeah, they were just in, in the, not put in there quickly. So it's five-parter, four. I don't remember this at all. Five. I vaguely recall the DC Focus line, uh, but I do not recall this story at all. Touch. Does anyone remember it? I assume that six parts was the whole run. We've got another one here. Kinetic. Another DC focus line. Seems to run a little bit longer. Let me just check that last one and see if it finished on number six. Yeah, it did finish on number six, that touch. Right, so Kinetic. I think there was another one in this line. I think it was on this in this line. I think I've got the graphic novels of it. That's not the right number. Let's just put the right number in first. Three. And it was like a, a kid who I think he had a, did a bloody high school massacre and ended up in in prison. But he developed some kind of power while he was in there, where he was able to leave his body and do stuff. Got a strange feeling it was by the bloke who did Howard the Duck just before he died. Can't remember what his name was now. I could be remembering it all wrong. Sometimes, I, I, well, yeah, I mainly remember things wrong. Anyway, this is another title that I have no memory of whatsoever. <laughs> you watch enough of my videos, there's a familiar refrain on my videos. Right, Fraction. I've just seen the back cover of this and it's given me a memory of it. I think there's like four guys, villains I think, and they managed to pick up uh, a super suit and they divide the parts of the super suit between them. So one's got the helmet, one's got the boots, one's got the gloves, one's got the chest piece. So quite an interesting uh, idea. So I suppose they've all got a different fraction of the suit. I'm assuming that's where the name comes from. I think they, uh, 
end up at loggerheads of each other. I'm not too sure. From what I can remember, which is nothing really, I've got a vague idea it wasn't a bad little title though. Something a bit different, a bit interesting. It's quite a good picture. Okay, here's one of those titles. <clears throat> now they made a big thing about it. But a whole crossover, the Millennium crossover from the pages of Millennium, the new Guardians. You know, they tried to start up a new team and uh, I think it didn't really take off and uh, they ended up killing them off pretty quickly really. But these guys are supposed to like herald in the new Millennium or something. I've been really important, these new Guardians. <coughs> I think the only one that's still around is the Floronic Man. He was around before this and he carried on after it. But yeah. So he's been it's been a whole se like a series, look you know caring for these characters, hoping you know they're going to get found and given their powers, and then go on to save the universe from whatever the heck they're supposed to save the universe from. And then you know they didn't take off, die pretty quickly, I think, or get ignored, forgotten about. I'm not sure what's worse as a character to get killed off or just to get forgotten about, fade away into nothing. Suppose if you if you're not actually killed off, they could always bring you back at some point. You might you know, but then saying that they'll only bring you back probably to kill you, uh, or sometimes even if they do kill you off, they can still bring you back, can't they? Uh, Harbinger hasn't been seen for a while. She was I think she must have been a member of the New Guardians. She she wasn't one of the one of the humans who was changed into a New Guardian. She was around from before from old Crisis Day, wasn't she? Hallelujah, I've just found something. I'm going to tell you about it in a minute. Let's just finish off this Guardians run first. Oh, here we go. New Guardians number nine. New Guardians ten. I can't remember what, what I thought the conversation was about. Yeah, Harbinger, they bring her back every now and again. Every time there's another crisis, they want her to come and be the Harbinger of... All right, that's it. It's a 12-part final issue. Yeah, the characters. Uh, to be honest, I don't think I don't know who wrote this run. Bates and Dooley, art by Broderick and Cabrera. Not really names that have got any longevity that I can think of. I, I certainly don't recognise them. So I just don't think they got a really good run. I don't think their stories were. I couldn't. You know, fair enough. I don't remember half the stories that I read, but I kind of re remember at the time it not being overly exciting as stories go. Which you know you got to hit the ground running with these kind of titles to get them popular haven't you right now regular watchers of my videos may remember me harping on about having some mandrake art thinking that i had a piece of mandrake art and then i thought to myself oh no i must have dreamt that no i must have i must have been dreaming i haven't got any i wouldn't have bought any original mandrake art how could i afford it but i remember now and i kind of remembered it in the end i thought it was a dream and it kind of was a bit of a dream but it, it wasn't, it, I did actually, I figured it out in the end, that I, what it was, I actually bought some um, comics that Mandrake brought out. He, I think he, I don't know if he just did the, the right, the, I thought he did the story as well as the art, but maybe he just did the art, but he did them with image, and it was up on his website. Yeah, just art, it's by, art by Tom Mandrake. And I bought them because, you know, I like his stuff, and it was called Creeps, yeah? And I remember buying it straight off his website. I think I'd gone on there to look for original art, actually, to see what the prices were like. And I think I might have been considering it. And then I saw these comics were going. And uh, I didn't—I don't remember this part, but they're all signed. I've got them all signed by him as well. That's awesome. So it's called Creeps. And you know what his art is like. So dark and, and scary stuff. And I think it was just a four-part. And I've got all four parts here. And they're all signed. That is bloody awesome. I'm well happy with that. I didn't even realise they were signed. Mandrake, 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 Mandrake. One of my favourite artists, Mandrake, is as well. And the thing that I was remembering was that he put in a little sketch in it as well. Thanks, Graham. Tom Mandrake. He's given me a little spectre sketch. That is awesome. That is well cool. You know, it's the only bit of original art I've got. We don't get to see artists. I mean, I've never been to a con apart from... I went to my first con last month. So you don't really get to see artists much. Or especially when you don't go to any cons. But to get a bit of, you know, original art from somebody that, you know, whose art I've really enjoyed 
is, you know, great. I'm right happy with that. I'm glad I found it now. Now I've remembered the story. I've been harping on about it for ages. And now, yeah, there you go. That's a, that's a little bit of spectre there. Drawn by Mandrake's own f creepy fingers. <laughs> well, maybe his fingers aren't creepy, but they sure produce some creepy stuff. That's awesome. Happy with that. Okay, that has made me very happy, that has. I'm very pleased with that. Right, <coughs> Wildstorm 4 par Jet. I don't remember this person at all. Jet is her name. Yeah, is that Dan Abnett? Is that Abnett? Hmm, yeah, I'm not sure. A Wildstorm, which I think is now owned by DC. That pose there, that's a physical impossibility and an impractical pose to be making. I'm not sure why doing the splits in midair would ever be a thing that was necessary. <laughs> I don't know. It just looks painful. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> uh, there's the last one. Jet. Four-parter. Okay, I'm wondering if this is valuable. I didn't remember having this. Is, is this alias? Is this not... Um, uh, Jessica Jones. Probably not. I don't know if it's. The, I don't know if she's quite popular now, isn't she? She's very popular now, Jessica Jones. And this is number one, but it's probably not her first one. I'm gonna have to look that up. I'm sure I've seen some people posting about this. Uh, I don't know. I have to look into that. Alias number one. Why am Michael Bendis? I think that's Jessica Jones. Anyway, I'm not too sure. Right, number two. Three. This is a Max Comics uh, run. I'm not sure if Jessica Jones started in Max Comics. Well, I say Max Max Comics is just the adult kind of variant for Marvel, isn't it? It's a Marvel comic, but just the the Max line was the for adults kind of line. If that number one turns out to be a Valuable comic, I'll be well happy. <laughs> I don't know when she started. When did she start Jessica Jones? She's reasonably new, isn't she? Um, well, I can't get a date on these unless I open them up. i right, sure. As soon as I finish this, so I'm going to be looking her up to find out if that was her first appearance. Um, all right, well, that's the that's the alias. Eleven issues of Alias from Max Comics. I'm not sure, yeah, I'm not sure if they're valuable or not. Anyway, then we've got a Fury, Nick Fury. I think I remember this one, Garth Ennis. He's a bit of a grizzled old dog. And uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's the usual kind of Ennis dark humour. <laughs> I think he has a nephew he doesn't like who's a bit of a twerp. And he has like um, imaginations of feeding him to a lion or something or a tiger or something like that. It's uh, quite silly. Anyway, that's, I think that was a six-part uh, fury. I think he basically goes on a mission uh, as, a, as an old man kind of thing. I'm not sure the story is with fury now in Marvel because I've not really read them that much. But here's a character I really like. I'm, I'm not sure how many of these I've got, but uh, Marvel premiere featuring Jack of, Heart, Jack of Hearts from 1978. No, because you demanded the Jack of Hearts blast into solo action, right? So that can't be his um, his first appearance then, because uh, obviously they wouldn't demand it if I never knew about him. I was hoping for a second it might be his first appearance. But yeah, Jack of Hearts is a character I've always liked. I don't know why it's his costume. Something about his costume, I've always enjoyed. I always liked it. I always thought he was a cool looking dude. But then again, I also like the Royal Flash Gang as well. Maybe it's only your cards. Maybe I'm a, a poker player, a, a secret guard, card smith or something. I don't know. No, I don't like particularly like playing cards. I do like the Royal Flash Gang, though, from uh, DC. And I do like Jack of Hearts costume. I don't know if it's something about having half, half a face and the heart over his eyes. But yeah, he's an interesting sort of cosmic character, isn't he? We've all kind of... I think he fires like radiation or something like that out of his, uh, his blasts. I'm not too sure. But yeah, he's always looked cool. He's got quite a lot of power as well. But, you know, with these cosmic characters, it's hard to work out who's more powerful, really. 
I think they rewrite it every every few minutes, depending on what they want to, what story they want to tell. All right, then we got just like one one comic there, Jack of the Jack of Hearts, and is that Ganymede? I think it must be Ganymede, wasn't it? It could be anything. Canny, canny mean. It could be canny mean, but I'm pretty sure it's Ganymede mean because that is a moon of. Um, is it Jupiter? It's Ganymede, moon, the moon of Jupiter or Saturn. One, of, one of, It's a moon of one planet or other. <laughs> right. Uh, we've got a Marvel holiday special, number one. Stop that bearded man! Yeah, no one gives me a lump of coal and lives, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I should, I'm gonna have to make a video of the, those that DC Marvel one and and this sorry that DC Christmas special and this uh, Marvel holiday special. I think that'd be quite cool actually if I would get around to making a, a comic about those uh, or a video about those. Maybe I'd do them in the style of uh, my uh, Thirteen Nights of Halloween. Do a couple of Christmas yarns. That would be quite fun actually. I might have to think about that. Right, Marvel Superheroes Full Special. Captain America, Hulk, Blue Shield, Wasp, Speedball, Captain Marvel. All right, you got a Spring Special here from 1992. Uh, a Summer Special from 1992. And then we have a, a Fall Special from 1992. Hello. What's going on with her costume? <laughs> that doesn't look very. That doesn't look very good, does it? This is a full special to catch a death wearing nothing but a wreath of flames, um, and then we have got a spring special from 1993. So yeah, I do like these kind of things, the, the chunky, sort of 80 page giant kind of things. Yeah, they could do these all day long. I'd always, I'd always be willing to pick up some of those. Look at those. Look at that story you get there for you know one pound eighty five back in that time. Probably a quite, quite a good deal. I do like that kind of stuff. Right, we come to my pile labelled four. I do not think I have any old ones. In fact, looking at this, I do not have any particularly old ones. 1994 appears to be the earliest four that I have. Number 343. It's certainly not a character that I recall collecting uh, uh, regularly at any point, you know. Uh, 350. What year are these from? 94 or 84? I think they're from 84. Yeah, this is 85. This is one I really I like, this one. <laughs> Stand aside, Thunder God. Walt Simerson is on vacation and so art thou. Oh, Herky, you're so, so godly. Featuring a four Hercules clash you're not going to believe. If I recall this story, I could be mistaken, but I think Hercules is um, in the park and there's some kids there and they sort of come up to him and say, "Oh, tell us about your your you know your adventures." And uh, he starts talking about how many times he's fought four over the time over time, and how he's always made four look daft because he's so so mighty. And then he sees one one kid. He's like not liking the stories, and he's obviously a four fan. And Hercules doesn't want to hurt the kid's you know feelings of his boastfulness, and he's so he sort of. You know, he admits it like in the tower that, oh no, four saved me one time from, from something. Four is a mighty warrior just as I am. You know, he, he was just being boastful, but he didn't want to hurt this kid's, uh, you know, who was obviously a four fan's feelings. So, yeah, I think that could be that story. It might not be. It might be, a, I might remember a completely different story. But that's a good story anyway. <laughs> that is a cool, I, like, I did like Hercules, who is bombasticness, his overblownness. Yeah, he's quite cool. All right, now here's a good cover. Toe to toe with the Incredible Hulk. Who boy, featuring an untold tale of the Thunder God's past. I doubt any of these are worth diddly squat. Is that mark on the cover of the comic? It is, isn't it? It's a big bloody line over the cover of the comic. Maybe that was maybe that should have been taken out of print or something. Should have, maybe that should have been recalled, but they they sold it as a cheap comic or something. Uh, while that Varia trembles, Doctor Doom versus Doctor Doom. All right, this is I think this is a classic from the Axe of Vengeance storyline. Nothing can stop the Juggernaut. And you got the new warriors in there helping him. Plus the first look at Marvel's newest super team, the New Warriors. Is this the very very first appearance of the New Warriors then? Uh, they're not exactly a major team, are they, in the uh, Marvel Universe? 
so I'm not sure if it is the first appearance and if it would be worth uh, anything as a key issue, possibly a minor key or something like that. I don't know, where's Daz the key chaser when you need him? Daz should be on hand on every single video that people make, just, just advising them. <laughs> he should hire that out as a service. <laughs> Daz's video checking service to let you know what keys you may have missed. <laughs> right. The Black Galaxy, Galaxy Saga. I wonder if this is a little run actually. If I've got a little run here, let's just. I've not actually been checking out the numbers. Uh, I mean, it's possible from now. They're, they're, they're jumping here and there. A lot of spy and roll on that one. A few of them aren't in covers. I need to. That's one of the good things about going through them is that I'm putting covers on stuff. Enter Escalibur. Why does Britain's mutant team strike out at the Thunder God? I've no idea. And why is he standing there with um, Juggernaut as well? Four versus Excalibur versus the Wrecking Crew versus Code Code. I can't speak. Code Blue. Code Blue is out of their blinking depth against any of those. Code Blue should just be walking away. Code Blue should be directing traffic to make sure no one gets too close. <laughs> they do not deserve to be there. <laughs> In these pages, stalks Ghost Rider. Okay. Requiem for the Wrecker. It's a cool cover. He's back, the uncanny absorbing man. All right, we have a. I think I'm out of all parts of this one. The Four War, part one of four. There's a lot of writing on that cover. Badly trimmed as well. It's badly trimmed at the top there. It's badly trimmed at the side there as well. Right, part two of four. No, and then I haven't got part three or part four of it. Eh, I'm not too sure. Did I just pick up a, a four every time I felt the need, or did these come from somebody else's collection that I might have picked up at some point? Not too sure. But I haven't got a, I haven't got an awesome amount of fours anyway. Well, it's a shame actually. I thought that I, I remember looking at people's videos, and I'm sure I had the one where Beta Ray Bill came in. Uh, but I don't think I have looked at this. It must have just been a cover that maybe I soon with maybe my mate Martin might have had them or something. Yeah, I thought I had that that classic Beta Ray Bill cover where he's like smacking down his hammer. But yeah, maybe that is not the case. Well, definitely it's not the case looking at this. I might have read it from an actually there was another mate I think who had collected some four. No, I forgot about that. My other mate David collected some comics I think. Well, he might have had some four. I'm not too sure. Beta Ray Bill. Yeah, never mind. I thought I had the first appearance of Beta Ray Bill, but I do not. I was remembering one of my friend's comics, I think. <laughs> right, and that is that is that for the Mighty Four. Not a particularly mighty collection of Mighty Four, I would have to say. Okay, now we have some Punisher. The Punisher Summer Special. 48 pages, no ads. The Punisher, Die Hard in the Big Easy. Classic Punisher. Representing two feature length black and white Punisher classics. Plus a new eight page story. Okay. Right, here we go. Punisher War Journal. Right, I think this is another one that my, my old mate used to collect actually. So I think I've probably read more of these than, I've actually, than I actually possess. So Punisher War Journal, 49. 50, no 51, then 52, then it jumps to 55, then it jumps to 69, uh, then it jumps to, oh, different different story. The Punisher War Zone are on now, number 11, number 13, number 14. Yeah, they've had to rewrite his story quite a bit, haven't they? <laughs> the timeline there. Is that, is that trying to say he was born in 63? No, if he was born in 63, he wouldn't have been at Vietnam, would he? Oh, I don't know. They've, to, they've probably had to change the war that he was involved in quite a few times. Number 19. Alright, so that's the war zone. And then we just go to... 
The Punisher. They killed the X-Men and the Punisher's next. That's the Ravages, isn't it? They never killed the X-Men, did they? Don't think they did. All right, uh, here we go to number 64 of The Punisher. Yeah, I do not seem to have a great deal of The Punishers. 65. 66. And then go to 68. 69, 70, and then we jump to 76, and 78. Okay, 79, 80, 82. I think my mate Vic Bub gave me some punishers and they might fit in some of these gaps actually. 99, that's quite handy. I'll have to look, have to look for those. Right, then we've got uh, Marvel Edge. Punisher joins the mob. Uh, Punisher again. A different run, different number in the, a new, a new volume I'm assuming. Number 8. Number 16. Okay, we've got The Punisher Invades Nam, number 52. No, because there was a title called Nam, wasn't there? Um, so is this just is this just the normal one of the Nam, but with Punisher added? I think it is. But I don't think they brought out a whole new story of... I don't know, though. Maybe they did. This is a bit weird. Punisher Invades Nam, part one of two and part two of two. That's 52 and 53. And then in number 68, we comes back to Punisher Invade the Nam again, but it's a three part. I have only got part two there and part three here. Okay. Oh, not confusion at all. All right. Um, Punisher, the origin of Microchip. Pretty sure he killed Microchip in the end. And uh, yeah, number two, the origin of Microchip. Two part special, I think. The Punisher, No Escape. With Paladin and US Agent. Punisher, The Ghosts of Innocence. Marvel Alterniverse, book one of one. Punisher kills the Marvel Universe. Uh, Punisher, The Prize. And then we've got a Marvel Knights. Punisher number 10. Should this be after this one or is it a different run? I'm not sure. We've got number one of Marvel Knights, The Punisher. I wonder if that's um, valued at all. Right. <clears throat> Punisher Warzone Annual number one. Featuring a new character called Phalanx. Uh, number five of the normal Punisher annuals. Uh, number six Punisher annuals. Uh, right, then we've got a, a four part annual from uh, 1990 Life Form, part one of four running the Punisher book, part two of four. Ran in the Daredevil books. Yeah, I think this life form is progressing and or evolving as it goes along, getting tougher as it goes. So it starts off like in a uniform like that, but it's sort of slowly seeping out and mutating. And see when it fights uh, Daredevil, it's it's got bigger, and then fight and then it fights Grey Hulk, and it's got even bigger still to give him hassles, give him problems, and then finally it goes cosmic. Turned into a, a massive protoplasmic Lovecraftian monster, a sprawling nuclear chaos, Azafoth. Ah! <laughs> yeah, anyway, Silver Surfer takes him out. Okay, Max Comics, Garth Ennis, Punisher, The End. Is this part of the same story? I'm not too sure. It's a different artist. But this is number two. This doesn't say number one, it just says the end. So maybe it's a different comic altogether. So we've got number two of this Punisher story. 
number three of this Punisher story. I'm assuming it's carrying on from that one. It'd be nice if they all actually belong together, but with there being no month on the front, can't tell. Number five. Number six. Number seven. Number eight. Nine. Ten. <laughs> All right, so 12. I don't know if this is right. I've got 12 parts here. Let's just have an open of this one to see if this is the end. It says Kitchen Irish Conclusion right at the end of it. Now, does that mean that was the conclusion of the Kitchen Irish story? Or does it mean the next issue is going to be Kitchen Irish? I don't know. All right, this seems to be a completely different story. This one is just a one shot, the end. And then, yeah, these ones, I've got two, two to 12. That's annoying. I haven't got number one of that. <laughs> okay, rest of this box is Daredevil. Uh, I don't think I've got an awesome amount of old Daredevils. This first one's got no cover. From 1976, it's number 136. That's a shame. No cover. And number 137. F- 140. Between the Beetle and the Blades. This one's rather moffy and grow. It's got sellotape and all sorts on this one. And number 203. It's not a particularly old one, I don't think, but it's uh, certainly seen better days. 207 209 These are from 1984 213 214 Look, it's Vandal Savage Oh no, wrong company uh, Some guy called Sin, I believe 224 225. You kind of think the Vulture would be able to take out Daredevil quite easily, actually, because Spider Man's got the yeah the jerk strength and agility, plus his his web spinners. So you think he'd be able to take out you know he can take out Vulture pretty easily, but it's no Daredevil just only got a normal human agility. And I'm, I don't know what it is. I, I, my my suspicion of this belief isn't as good as it used to be. Nowadays, when I see him swinging by just his billy club, it's just a little club with a hook on the end of it and he's managing to spin uh, swing along at, you know 50 stories high he just he's you know he's just as bad as batman is for me now i see batman spinning along with his bat around i think no he just doesn't look right or oh, i see catwoman using her whip to swing from building to building it's like that is so ridiculous she launches herself off of a blinking skyscraper and then whips her whip around a bloody lamppost or something ridiculous like that and doesn't break every single bone in her body. Yeah, yeah. Calm down, they're just comics. <laughs> but yeah, he does, 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 he does, blah. Yeah, my, uh, my ability to, to believe has been, uh, I don't know, eroded. All right, 252, double sized issue. All right, Daredevil, I love story. I don't know when, um, what's her face first came in, uh, Typhoid Mary. I don't, I probably haven't got the first appearance of Typhoid Mary, I wouldn't have thought. I doubt if any of these are worth a bean. All right. This one was quite a cool story. I quite, I remember this one. I remember buying this one when it came out. I think his guy was from Vietnam and I think he was his village was wiped out by some American soldiers and he comes back to get his revenge on them and he just and he says uh, did you hear the jungle whisper or something like that he's the jungle whispering or something is what he says which is some kind of phrase they used in Vietnam where they thought there was anybody out there like any enemies out there and he, uh, you know anyway this is Daredevil getting his ass handed to him by all manner of his enemies I think that was called Bushwhacker, I think. The guy there with the, who can turn his arm into a, a weapon. I'm not too sure who the others are, though. You 
think he'd be totally outclassed there in a battle with the mutant menace of the Blob and Pyro. Introducing the macabre menace of Blackheart. Is this the first time that Blackheart comes into the comics? He's the son of Mephisto, isn't he, Blackheart? 271. Ah, it's another one with a crossed out cover. It's got black, a black line, a black cross on the cover. That's annoying. Someone's obviously done that to try and take it out of circulation and then somebody else has sold it. <laughs> it's not too terrible. All right. Oh, mid-November. So it looks like it was going bi-monthly at one point, was it? Mid-November, that one. Oh, November and mid-November. Is there end of November as well? I don't know. 281. Showdown with Mephisto, guest starring the Silver Surfer. Yeah, Daredevil versus Mephisto, that's just, it's a no-brainer. He's going to get his butt handed to him. <laughs> All right. Well, knowing Mephisto, being the devil, he'd probably get red-hot pokers shoved up his butt and then have it handed to him. Whatever happened to Matt Murdock? Yeah, I haven't got any of the, the classic ones. I haven't got any death of uh, Electro or anything like that. No, uh Massive keys in my Daredevil collection whatsoever. Never mind. Well, that guy's name was Bullet. Battle with the Punisher. When strikes the hand. Alright, we're getting into the 90s now, I think. Yeah, 91, teaming up with Ghost Rider was basically everybody. Everybody teamed up with the Ghost Rider at least once. <laughs> Crushed by the hand. Last rights, one of four, is that? Yeah, one of four. The termination of Typhoid. I think he ends up getting locked away in a, a lunatic asylum, I think. Part two or four, three or four, and then we got double sized 300th issue special. Yeah, Kingpin's on his knees in tears. I think he had a relationship, a romantic relationship with Typhoid Mary, and I think um, Daredevil gets her put into a lunatic asylum. Right, versus the Owl, one of his, uh, that was always a Daredevil villain, the Owl, from what I recall. There's a villainess called the Surgeon General. <laughs> yeah. She probably does bad things to you if she sees you smoking. <laughs> the Surgeon General suggested that you don't smoke, it's bad for your health. Slash, slash. Calypso's back. Okay. The zombie without fear. She's got. She's got Matt under her power. And this is another one of those titles where Daredevil is in trouble. He's got everybody there, including the stilt man coming for him. Who's he got there? He's got, um, is that the Tattered Demalion? Yeah, there's a Tattered Demalion there. And then there's a Taskmaster. And I don't recognise any of the dudes at the back, but he's got the stilt man as well. Right, that seems to be the... I oh know, this is still part of the same run, actually, but it's just different art. This is this is when the art started going crap. They changed his costume as well. Yeah, I think this is just the... Yeah, the period when I stopped collecting Marvel comics. Right, let me jump forward. Oh, right, yeah, we've got some Marvel Knights. Start with number six. 
I'm pretty sure I got given these from somebody else. I don't think I bought these myself ever. Number seven. Number 10. Number 11. Number 12. Number 13. Number 14. Number 15. Uh, yeah. Sit there and read the numbers out to you, do <laughs> Quite a long run here, though. It's not too bad. Especially as I'm pretty sure these were given to me for nothing. Five. Oh, now we've got a jump. Jump to twenty nine. <clears throat> Thirty. Thirty one. I was thinking this was a different comic for a second. I couldn't see Daredevil on there. I'm looking at the Daily Globe. I missed the Daredevil down there. Yeah, so thirty two. Thirty three. Oh, Marvel Knights Tor book. Okay, that's all of the Daredevil run. Then it goes over to Marvel Knights. Marvel Knights appears to be Dagger, Black Widow, some dude, not the Shang-Chi master of fisticuffs, is it? Or whatever his name is. Punisher and Daredevil. Where's Cloak? Why is Dagger on her own? What's happened to Cloak? Hmm. I recognise that dude, but I can't remember what his name is. He was an enemy. He te used to team up with was it Machete and um, Batrock the Leaper. I think his name's like, like Zarat or something weird like that. I uh, can't remember now. Yeah. He's like a master, a killer, master killer kind of dude. Maximum security. Right, now is Dagger there being attacked by Cloak? Doctor Strange? Could that be Nightmare? In his Nightmare dimension? Moon Knight and Cage, I'm guessing, looks like it, with Daredevil. Like, most likely fighting the hand there. Is that Nick Fury? Looking very strange. This is, the, this is that style of art when it started uh, not appealing to me anymore. What's going on there? Is Nick Fury being turned into the Terminator? If that is Nick Fury. Right, right at the end now. Oh. Oh, this is confusing. Oh, should this is this part of this same run? I seem to have gone to number two all of a sudden. Are they are they misfiled? Should this one be right at the beginning of the run, or is it a different Marvel Knights? Don't know. It looks like it should be the same run, in which case it means it's in, in the wrong place. I don't know. Right, uh, Marvel Knights 3. I don't know if that's a different run or what. Well, these two are about the same people. But do they belong at the beginning of these comics I've just gone through? I'm not sure. Right, then finally, I think we've got a Marvel Knights double shot violent content. Uh, that one's by Ennis. Then we've got number two is by Morrison. Oh, they're just double shots of like... So this one's got Punisher Daredevil teaming up. This next one, I imagine that's Fury and Man Thing. And then we've got... Uh, Cloak and Dagger, so Cloak is back in this one, and uh, Electra. 
Is that Greg Rucker? Alright, uh, we got She, Shy, and Daredevil. She doesn't look very shy in that one. If she's feeling a bit shy, she should cover her ass up at the very least. I'll flip this book. Okay. Is that another story on the back then? Sneak Attack Edition. Crusade. Looks like a whole different company. Who the hell Crusade? Oh no, Crusade must be a company that she uh, comes from. Shy? Whatever. Right, and then finally in this one, oh, it's uh, just part four, I think. Daredevil and the Punisher versus Jigsaw. Well, is it just the Punisher? And it just happens to be Daredevil in this issue? I'm not sure. Anyway, that's it. That's all of those books. Many, many, many books for me to write down in my blog. Check out the blog. The link will be down below. You know, comment and all that kind of palaver. <laughs> and uh, cheers for watching.